take a look at improving the flow of our edit. One of the techniques we can use is the audience eye. For example, here I have a bright spot, and it could be interesting to match that with another bright spot, let's say the light bulb. The problem is that they're not really in the same position. So let's take a look at this edit first. I sing and love, and I'm feeling so, so if you want to match the two bright spots, we have a problem here because this is a sunset. So one of the easy ways to fix this is we can turn the sunset into a sunrise. So I will select the clip, go to the retiming effects, and play this clip in reverse. Sing and, love, and, and we just turn our sunset into a sunrise. Next, we have the bright spot of the ball, but as we can see, the bright spot is a little bit later in the clip. So what we could do is use our trim tool and slip the clip a little bit to the right. And you can see on the left frame have the brightest spot. That would be the beginning of the clip. So let's play them now. And I'm so what we have now is just an issue of position. This is about right here on the screen. And this is kind of on the opposite side. What we could do is open the effects browser and look for an effect called flipped. And we can flip the image. So I'll just drag and drop it on top, and that will match it a little bit better. And, I'm feeling so and as we can see, this naturally flows a lot better because we match the audience eye on the bright spot. So it's in the same spot on the screen. And I'm feeling something. So there you have it, a combination of a retiming effect and a perspective effect to achieve a connection between the two images. With a flipped effect, you can flip the image multiple ways horizontally, as we just did, vertically, or on both axes. Let's look at the retiming options. We already did one, which is the reverse. And as you can see, the color here above the clip is in green. That means that you have achieved the same speed as the original, but with the chevrons in the opposite direction, that means we are going in reverse. I can grab this upper corner here and pull. And if I change the color to this purple, that means I'm going faster than the original. If I pull and I see an orange color, I am obviously slower than the original. That gives you an indicator about how the clip is modified compared to its original speed. Uh, if you're wondering if a particular clip has been retimed, you can always select it and hit Command R for retiming, and then you will see the color. And that way you can see if it has been retimed. Let's explore some of the options we have for retiming clips. I will take this clip and open the retiming menu. We have preset speeds for slowing down, Let's say, for example, 50%. The thing with this, as you slow down the clip, make it half the speed, its length is going to double and ripple the rest of the timeline. That is also true for the other presets. For example, if I go twice as fast, the clip will be half the duration, and then everything else will ripple. If that is a concern, what you can do is use the custom option, which is here. Put the change that you want. Let's say we want this clip to be half the speed and make sure that you uncheck the ripple. So that way, the boundaries will not change, the speed will change, but nothing else in the timeline will be affected. One cool option with the custom speed is you can dial in a specific duration for your clip. So if you want to retime something to achieve a certain duration, that could be useful for commercials. For example, if we need to fit exactly 30 seconds with a certain clip, you could put that in, and Final Cut will calculate the speed to make it fit the exact duration. Another option is the hold. So if you select this, it will hold your image where you had the playhead. Then, of course, you can manage how long it is holding it for and then modify the speed before and after. This effect ripples the timeline, so be very careful. Another option is a speed ramp. One option here is a ramp from 0%, meaning accelerating, so it will go from 0 all the way to 100%. Let's play. As a progressive speed up and the opposite motion, right? We can go from 100 to zero percent, so a slowdown. As you can see, when you retime these clips, particularly in the slower speeds, the motion could be a bit choppy. So we can improve this by improving the quality of the algorithm. To do this, you can go to video quality and go higher up in the settings. Optical flow is the best setting. It will take the longest to render, but that will give you the cleanest retiming. As you can see, it's taking a bit of time to analyze the footage, 
and then you can play it back, it should play a lot smoother. Yes, definitely an improvement here. Once a clip has been affected, you can always go back to the original speed by selecting the clip, go to the retiming menu, and do a reset speed. That will take you back to the original.